Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am and we are so pleased that you have chosen and joined with us this morning for worshiping our Almighty Lord. I'm so pleased that we have this wonderful building to worship together and I believe the God be with you even though we are facing still in dark time. So may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Almighty God as we receive this morning's prayer. Please join with me call to worship this morning. Praise the God of all creation. Worship the one who calls us, speaking with a different voice, offering an unexpected invitation. Celebrate the presence of our loving God. Rejoice the realm of God is near.
Please join with me prayer of confession and silent prayer. Let us pray to the one who stands ready to forgive. O oh God, we pour out our heart to you. Receive the pain that works in our humanity. As we offer up what we have hidden from ourselves and from the world, those words and deeds that keep us separated from your love, help us be like the people of Nevis, open to your healing presence. Assurance of God's pardon. Jesus called us to repent and draw near to Him. In Christ Jesus, we are made whole. Alleluia! Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you, peace peace be with with you. you. California. Peace be with you. Peace, peace Christ, Christ be with you. Today, or the Testament reading is Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to the Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to the Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to the Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. 
Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed the fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The reading from the New Testament today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Now as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired hands and followed him. Reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you know what time it is? With this pandemic, it's, it's very easy to get confused about the time. We're, we're out of our normal routines and our schedules and it's hard to know what time it is. Uh, some years ago, uh, nurses in the hospitals discovered that patients were getting, um, oh, somewhat confused because they didn't know what time it was. So they started putting up clocks and calendars so that people could keep track of the time. What, what time is it? The Gospel according to Mark begins the story of Jesus and it starts with John the Baptist, who is uh, preaching in the wilderness. And Jesus comes and is baptized by John. And then he's driven out into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. And immediately after that, he begins to preach in Galilee. And the content of his preaching is that the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has drawn near, repent and believe, repent and believe. The time is fulfilled, what time is it? The time for Jesus Christ. Mark wants us to see that that John the Baptist was the one who prepared the way for the coming of Jesus. He was the one who preached repentance and preached that people should be looking for the coming Lamb of God. And now, and now Jesus has begun preaching because, Mark says, John was arrested. That's that's what time it is. The time of John preaching is now over. The time of Jesus has begun. But, but you know, uh, perhaps that's more than just a way of 
expressing the time when John was arrested. Perhaps it is also telling us something about the circumstances of that time. This was not a time of, of, of peace and prosperity. The people of Israel were under the domination of Rome, of a very cruel and dominating emperor, and of a king who was very arbitrary. John was arrested because he preached about the immorality of King Herod, and he was eventually killed because of that. This was a very difficult time. And, and perhaps it tells us that as we too live in difficult times, Jesus comes to be preaching to us. Jesus comes among us. This is the time. Today is the time. The time back then and the time now. The time is fulfilled. Now is the time. I'm recording this sermon on Monday, Martin Luther King Day, and probably on the news you may hear excerpts of King's famous sermon. It's usually called, I Have a Dream, uh, on the Washington Mall in front of the Lincoln Memorial. I have a dream. But also in that sermon, King said over and over, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. And <clears throat> I think he got that from Jesus. Jesus is saying, now is the time. The time is fulfilled as Jesus came to preach and heal, as Jesus went to his death on the cross, as Jesus was raised from the dead, this is the time. And although Jesus is no longer with us preaching in Galilee, Jesus' preaching of the good news is still very much with us. We are called to hear the preaching of Jesus and to respond in faith. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has drawn near. Repent and believe. John preached repentance. John preached turning around your life. And Jesus continued that word, repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the good news. What does that mean for us? Certainly repentance is a turning around from one way of life to a a another way, from worshiping one God to worshiping the true God, from putting all of our emphasis here turning around to the Lord. Repent and believe and trust that the kingdom, the rule, the reign of God is with you now in Jesus Christ. God is indeed with us and calls us to be his people. You know, we could think of belief as affirming uh, the reality of Christ or, or affirming the Apostles' Creed or saying the Jesus Prayer or, or, or something like that. But this story goes on to tell us of Jesus calling the first disciples. To repent and to believe is to respond to Christ's call. Jesus was walking along and he saw Simon and Andrew and he said, come, follow me. And then later he saw John and James and he said, come, follow me. To repent and to believe is to follow Jesus, to be his disciple. 
I think it was Martin Luther who said that whatever we hold most dear, that is our God. And if we are to believe in follow Jesus, then that is what we hold most dear. Let's be honest with ourselves that, that actually we have a, a number of gods. We worship different things, and sometimes we just worship ourselves. There's no one more important than me. Or we think there's a multiplicity of, of, of gods, of powers, of things that we hold most dear. When my wife and I were first married many, many years ago, I was in seminary and she was uh, hired to teach school. And way back then, teachers in public schools had to sign an oath. And it had included a statement that said, I believe in a supreme being. And she showed me that, and we talked about that a little bit. H have you thought about how absurd that is? How can you believe in a supreme being? You either believe in the supreme being, the Lord God, or you do not. Now, you might believe that some other God is the supreme being, but if it's a being, it cannot be by definition, be supreme because it implies that there is a multiplicity of supreme beings. And that actually reflects our culture, doesn't it? Even after all these years. We say we are Christian. We say that we are following Jesus. But in actuality, we believe in, in a variety of supreme beings. It may be our nation, if we call it a Christian nation. It may be things, if, if we're after prosperity. It, it may be most anything. Doesn't these days often have the label religion, but it is whatever we worship and whomever we follow. You and I, who have said we are Christian, you and I who have professed faith in saying we will follow Jesus, you and I are called to worship and serve the Lord. Now, that's not always easy and, and I don't think we should somehow glamorize the first disciples. They were not perfect, were they? A in fact, scholars have, have debated why the gospel according to Mark paints such a dark picture of the disciples. They, they had doubts. They denied Christ. They... they simply were not heroes the way we would think of them. Why is it that Mark portrayed them this way? I think, I think it is a way to show us that every single one of us can follow Jesus. Every single one of us can claim God's grace for our lives. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be uh, the, the kinds of people we think are, quote, saints. We simply are followers of Jesus. The book of Jonah, our Old Testament reading today, talks about a very fallible follower of God. You remember the story. We often hear about Jonah and the whale or the big fish, but Jonah was called by God to go and preach to Nineveh, 
Now, Nineveh was the capital of the adversary of Israel, so it, it was not something Jonah wanted to do. And Jonah got on a boat and went as far as he could the opposite direction from Nineveh to Tarshish. Uh, he wanted to go to, to Spain, away from, away from God away from God's call to him. And the story goes that a storm came up and the seamen finally threw him overboard and a big fish caught him and threw him up on the dry land. And then God came to him again and said, Jonah, now that I've gotten your attention, I want you to go to Nineveh and I want you to preach to the people there. Well, reluctantly, Jonah goes to Nineveh, and he preaches to Nineveh, and they repent. They repent. And Jonah says, See, Lord, I knew you were a long-suffering God. I knew you would, would be merciful to them. You see... Jonah didn't want them to repent. Jonah wanted to slap them down. He did not want to extend God's grace to these foreigners. And yet, and yet, God chose Jonah. And, and God chose Simon and Andrew and James and John and even Judas. And John, God called the Apostle Paul, who was a persecutor of Christians. God reaches out to all sorts of people, including you and me and, and everyone else that responds to his grace and calls us into his service. We're beginning a new year, a very difficult year. We're beginning to get the vaccine, but it will be a long time before we're in anything like normal situation again. We still have economic problems. We still have political problems. We are not free from all of the stresses yet. And yet in the midst of that, God calls us, every one of us, to serve, to give ourselves to God, to be witnesses to his grace and love and care. In the last few weeks, from Christmas and then Epiphany, we have been reminded over and over again of Emmanuel, God with us, of John's way of saying that the Word became flesh, human in Jesus Christ, and dwelt among us. God is with us. God calls us to service in his name. It's not just Simon and Andrew and James and John and Jonah and Paul. God calls all of us into his service. In his name, amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the midst of these difficult days, we still hear your word of grace that now is the time that you are with us as much as you were with the disciples 2,000 years ago, that you are with your people today. We pray, Lord. We pray, Lord, that as we hear your call, we may live in faith and proclaim in our lives your word of grace for us. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
We are so glad that you have joined with us in worship this day. As the disciples were called, so we are called to be fishers of men, to, to share the good news in the way we live and what we say in a world that needs to hear God's grace. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion fellowship the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and every day. Amen.